Hey everybody, so welcome back to our uh, sheet mulching here at Sueño de Vida in Ecuador. Okay, so today what we are going to do is uh, pull back this tarp and see what's going on underneath. This is a tarp I put down about two weeks ago to kill the grass underneath, so it's not doing too bad. We've still got some, obviously some live grass here, but uh, compared to what it looked like, which was this, which was that beyond that, uh, there, beyond the tarp, it's getting pretty dead. Uh, definitely want to cover it for a little while longer until it's really dead. Uh, but today what we're going to do is we're going to start to enrich the soil. So when the grass gets to the point where it's like pretty dead, uh, what I like to do is start to add in some nutrients, okay? So we've got a whole bunch of dry material here. These are huge ferns that I cut some cassava sticks, just a big old wheelbarrow full of uh, dry material. We're going to pile this up and we're going to burn it. And the way that we're going to attempt to burn it is not so much in like a big roaring fire, but in a smoldering fire, a long smoldering fire, which is going to help to create chunks of carbon, aka the famous biochar, that will mix in with the soil and what that does is it helps to hold nutrients to the soil in the soil so biochar in and of itself to be very clear charcoal biochar is not a fertilizer what it is is it is um it's got ions it's got a charge right and the charge attracts to the charge of the nutrients in the soil and they it holds it there it binds nutrients in the soil so that's what we're doing today is making some biochar and using it to enrich the soil here under the tarp so that we have a really fertile garden space. And here we are, burning off the last of the material, all the dry material. So it's, we've got a lot of nice blackened pieces here. It's those blackened pieces that you want uh, in the soil attracting nutrients and holding nutrients. So we're just going to let this all burn off for a little while, get everything nice and smoldered down, and uh, then we will see what we've got. Okay, so our fire is well out. We've got a lot of good blackened material here to stir into the soil, so that's what I'm going to do. And then the last thing that I want to do is um, I don't want to leave this open overnight. If it rains, all that good new nutrients is going to wash out, okay? So you want to give the biochar a chance to bind to the nutrients, especially the phosphorus that's in the ash, okay? Don't let that wash out. So what I've done is I've cut a whole bunch of green material. You can use uh, tree branches, leaves, uh, fresh grass clippings, uh, uh, mulched wood, whatever you got. You want to cover it up really nice with some organic matter. I've just got a whole bunch of leaves that I cut. So I'm going to open up the soil a little bit with a shovel. Not a big deal. Just kind of stir that matter into the surface level. Don't dig deep. Just mix it into the surface and then go ahead and cover it on up with your organic and also, if you've got compost, uh, go ahead and add a little surface dusting of compost to the surface as well. I've got some uh, nut shells in here from the Sacha Inchi vine and just some nice finished compost from the pile. Just mixing that in as well. So we've got biochar, ash, chicken poo, uh, nut shells, which are really good, high in nutrients, good in mulch, some finished compost. And we're just going to go ahead and cover all, break it out nice and evenly. Got my little rake here, and then I'm going to go ahead and apply this uh, top layer of uh, nice big leaves, green matter to the surface to protect it until I decide to plant in it. Hello. Everybody, okay, so I have planted my bed that was prepared with biochar and compost. And I put some pineapples in here and some uh, little orchidias. And uh, you'll notice the soil is nice and loose and black and it's because it's been well prepared. Subtropical soil and soil in the Amazon, it doesn't look like this, okay? It's usually like a very hard red clay. And that comes from the gravitational force of raindrops 
hammering the ground and washing out the nutrients. I've talked about this before. So by putting biochar and compost in the soil, and then the nutrients can bind to the biochar, hey puppies, um, that then the nutrients can stay in the soil for a much longer period of time. Actually, there are biochar enriched piles of what is called terra preta. This is on its way to becoming terra preta, black Indian earth, okay? Soil enriched by biochar, which is basically pieces of charred wood, it's not a big deal, um, and uh, lots and lots and lots of compost. Terra preta, okay, that's what it is. This isn't quite terra preta yet, but it's on its way. So I'm gonna keep making this terra preta by deep mulching the soil. So the very last thing I'm gonna do here with my bed is I cut up some nice big leaves from bananas and I'm going to very thickly mulch the bed in between all the pineapple little plants. And this will have a couple different functions. What it will do is it'll keep mud from splashing up on the pineapples, obviously. You don't want mud splashing up on freshly planted things that it uh, propagates fungus that way. So I'm putting the mulch in nice and close to protect my little baby pineapples from mud. And then the other thing these banana leaves will do is entice lots and lots of critters and microbes up to the surface to eat them. Yeah? And then as the microbes and the critters come up to the surface to eat these banana leaves, they will break down, okay, and feed the soil. Lots of nitrogen in banana leaves, a lot of potassium. A really important thing to keep in mind, guys, is that nothing breaks down by itself. So if you have dead soil that is devoid of life, devoid of microbes, okay, oh my God, they're so curious. Um, if there's nothing in the soil to digest organic matter, then you don't have living soil. And if you don't have living soil, your plants cannot be fed. Plants cannot feed themselves. They need bacteria and microbes in the soil to do it. That's what shuttles the nutrients into the plant roots. So it's really important to just keep piling on the organic matter. Don't ever stop piling on the organic matter. It doesn't matter what it is. It can be fallen leaves. It can be wood chipping. It could be whatever you have, grass clippings, right? Old plants. You know, you can go to uh, Home Depot or Lowe's and they will just give you all the dead plants from the nursery for free. That's excellent mulch, excellent organic matter, okay? I'm using these big banana leaves because that's what I've got. So that's my final step. Biochar, compost, plant, deep mulch.